All right, my friends, we're going to take a little look at a process for finding roots of polynomial functions. Here's a fourth order or a quartic polynomial. And to kick this off, what you want to do is look at that last term, the constant term, and find its factors. Traditionally, these factors are called p. And so the factors are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Those are all factors of 10. And then what you do is you look at the leading term and get the factors of the leading coefficient. Those are traditionally called q. Well, the leading coefficient here is 1 because the leading term is 1x to the fourth. So its only factor is 1. Now, the reason you do this is possible real roots include plus or minus p over q. And so what that means is possible real roots include plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. And so that's the family of possible real roots we can draw from. Let's just see if 1 is a root. And the easy way to check that is to just plug it in. The reason I'm starting with just trying 1 is it's really easy to plug in x equals 1 and see what happens. You basically can just read off the coefficients. Uh, f of 1 is going to be 1 minus 3 plus 5 minus 1 minus 10. And when you do that, you get negative 8. So clearly 1 is not a root. Okay. Well, negative 1 is also pretty easy to use because you just have to, you can basically read off the coefficients, but adjust the sign based on the power of negative 1. So if we try f of negative 1, um, you get positive 1 for the first term since it's to the fourth, um, plus 3 since negative 1 cubed would be negative 1, but then times negative 3 would give you plus 3, and then plus 5, plus 1, minus 10, and you get 0 this time. Well, so that means that negative 1 is a root. It's a 0 of this polynomial. Well, if negative 1 is a root, that means that x plus 1 is a factor. Um, and so what that means is we can, if we can factor out x plus 1, we'll knock this down to a cubic polynomial, which is easier to solve. So what I'm going to do is do synthetic division to divide x plus 1 into this big fourth order polynomial. So as you may remember with synthetic division, you you put the, the root, so if you're dividing you know, x plus 1 into this thing, you put a negative 1 up in this little box, and you simply write down the coefficients. 1, negative 3, 5, negative 1, and 10. Draw your little line. Um, bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 gives you negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1 gives you negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 gives you 4. 5 and 4 make 9. 9 times negative 1 gives you negative 9. Negative 1 and negative 9 gives you negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 1 gives you positive 10. And, well, we knew we were going to get a remainder of 0 because we already knew that x plus 1 was a factor. Well, the great thing about this is we can now reduce the order of this fourth order polynomial to make it, well, x plus 1 times a cubic. And the coefficients of the cubic are the results of our synthetic division here. Um, 1, negative 4, 9, and negative 10, and there's no remainder. Well, so the beauty of this is now we only need to solve this um, cubic polynomial um, to find, well, other roots or factors. So we've made the problem simpler. Well, so since it's next on our list is to try a root of 2, um, let's just see if 2 is a root of this cubic polynomial. So we're just going to repeat synthetic division, but now we're just going to use the coefficients of this cubic polynomial. Well, so let's do synthetic division again. Uh, 1 and, well, bring down the 1. 1 and 0 is 1. 1 times 2 will give you 2. Negative 4 and 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 will give you negative 4. 9 and negative 4 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And you can see there is no remainder here. So what that means is that 2 is a root. So 2 is a root. So that means that x minus 2 is a factor. Well, so what that means is we can pull both x plus 1 and x minus 2 out of this original polynomial. And what will be left over will be the coefficients of, well, this synthetic division will give us the coefficients of a quadratic now. So if you remember, when we pulled out the x plus 1 factor, we were left with a cubic. And now that we've also pulled out the x minus 2, now we're down to a quadratic. So if we can solve this quadratic, we'll have found all four of the roots to this fourth order polynomial. So here we are, this fourth order polynomial can be written as these two factors times this quadratic. So if we can just solve this quadratic, we'll be done. I'm just going to use the quadratic formula this time. Um, so, you know, negative b, which would be, well, positive 2, plus or minus root, well, b squared is going to be 4, 
and then minus 4ac, minus 4 times 1, which is the coefficient of your x squared, and then times c, which would be 5 here, and then all over 2a, or all over 2 times 1. Um, and so if you simplify this a bit, you'll get 2 plus or minus root negative 16 over 2. Um, so we're going to get complex roots here, two complex roots. 2 plus or minus 4i over 2. And then if you, well, divide both of those terms by 2 to, well, simplify, you'll get 1 plus or minus 2i. So these are your other two roots. So in all their glory, our roots are negative 1, which we found right out of the gate, um, 2, 1 plus 2i, and 1 minus 2i. So what that means is if you were to graph this function, it should just cross the x-axis two times. Um, so here, in fact, is what the x, the graph of this function looks like. And it, indeed, you can see it crosses the x-axis at negative 1 um, and at positive 2. Well, so hopefully that helps, um, gives you a little bit of a taste of how to find roots of polynomial functions. Thanks for watching.